How's it going, Ayo? In this video, we're going to talk about Bad Baby's dark secret, the blindside Michael Orr's suing his adoptive family, and Drake's unexpected feud. All right, so Bad Baby has now taken to Instagram to share a very disturbing message. She says that she's living in fear of her mother, Barbara Brigoli. In an emotional statement, the 20 year old rapper spoke out about her relationship with her mother, who was with her on that infamous Dr. Phil episode, you know, the one that got her famous. And it turns out they have some very troubling history. In 2021, she revealed that she was sent to a troubled teen facility called Turn About Ranch after her appearance on the show. And apparently her mother and her grandmother knew about it without telling her. In a now expired Instagram story, Danielle said, my mom shows the same pattern with everyone that comes into my life. At this point, it's her and no one else. I live my life in fear of this lady every day. She's mentally sick and I'm scared of what she's capable of. She went on to say, don't think I have her around because I want to. Every time I ask her to move out and offer to pay in full for a house for her, she threatens me and threatens my boyfriend and friends. Danielle says that she's tired of living a false narrative on social media. She makes it seem like she cares about her and loves her when it's all a front. She said that with some people you just can't win no matter how hard you try, even when they don't deserve the nice you anymore. She claims that she gives to her mother both financially and emotionally, but nothing's ever enough. Quote, I want the threats to stop and I want my life back. I want my home back. I want her to stop ruining my friendships and trying to ruin my relationship. Danielle went on to explain her frustration at her mother's behavior and how no one seems to take her seriously when she speaks out. She also shared concern over her safety. In another Instagram story, she claimed that her mother fakes documents, text messages, and convinces other people to be on her side. And in the end, she truly feels that the only way for her out of this is to pass away. Because even if she puts her mom in her own home and removes her from her life, that won't stop the threats. She ended the video by saying that she had contacted the police, but nothing could be done about the situation with her mother living in her home. Earlier this year, while speaking to Emily Ratajkowski on the High Low podcast, she revealed that she recently discovered her mother had been emailing Dr. Phil about her since she was two years old. Danielle called her mother a narcissist, and in reference to her OnlyFans account, she said that Barbara didn't care about where her money came from. When Emily asked if she financially supported her own mother, she didn't respond verbally, but her response did imply that yes, she does. So that is really, really shocking. But now moving on to possibly the craziest story of the week, the former NFL star Michael Orr, the subject of the book and the movie called The Blind Side, is now claiming that the couple who took him in as a teenager misled him into believing that they were adopting him, when really they were placing him in a conservatorship, all to make money off of him. There is now a petition to terminate this conservatorship, and according to the filing, the lie of Michael's adoption is one upon which co-conservators Leanne Tui and Sean Tui have enriched themselves at the expense of their ward. The Signed Mike Orr. The story of Michael and the Tui family became the subject of an Oscar winning film called The Blind Side, which starred Sandra Bullock in the role of Leanne Tui. The film, based on the book of the same name, chronicles Michael's life as a homeless child through his college football career and his eventual NFL stardom. The Tui's negotiated a deal with 20th Century Fox that left Michael without any payment for the rights to his name, his likeness, and his life story, while the family received a contract price of $225,000 and 2.5% of the film's net proceeds. The film ended up grossing over $300 million. Out of that money, a $200,000 donation was also made to Leanne Tui's charitable foundation. Shockingly, the petition said that Michael made no money off of the film, despite the fact that it was based on his own life story. Everything about this is incredibly messed up. According to the petition, Michael does not recall signing the agreement for the rights to his life story. The document has a signature that appears to be his, but he claims that no one ever presented it to him with any explanation. The filing accuses the family of a breach of their duty as conservatives, which is described as so gross and appalling that they should be sanctioned by the court. Apparently, Michael was a ward of the state of Tennessee by the age of 11 and homeless as a child. A friend's father helped him enroll in Briarcrest Christian School in 2002, where he played basketball and football. The families of classmates would often let him stay at their homes just for him to have a place to sleep. Michael was described as a really nice kid in need who fell through the cracks of a broken social system. But the two saw something in him that they could take advantage advantage of. They saw him as a gullible young man whose athletic talent could be exploited for their own benefit. Michael claims that the summer before his senior year, after he became a legal adult in July of 2004, the couple offered him a place to live in their home. They said that they would legally adopt him and he believed them. He learned only in February this year that the documents they asked him to sign under the belief that it was all a part of the adoption process, well, these were actually conservatorship papers that would strip away his legal rights. They told him that because he was no longer a minor, the adoption 
construction paperwork was titled a conservatorship. According to the lawsuit, at no point did they inform him that they would have ultimate control over all his contracts. And as a result, Michael did not understand that if the conservatorship was granted, he was signing away his right to contract for himself. The conservatorship was granted until he reached the age of 25 or until the court terminated the order. But the arraignment was never terminated. In addition to termination, the petition asks for the court to issue an injunction barring the Tuies from using his name and likeness. In response to the news, Sean Tuie said that he was devastated by Michael's allegations and insisted the family did not make any money off of the Blindside movie. Quote, It's upsetting to think that we would make money off of any of our children, but we're going to love Michael at 37 just like we loved him at 16. Sean did say that the Blindside book author gave them half of his share of the profits, but he maintained that everyone in the family got an equal share, including Michael, which he claimed was about $14,000 each. Sean also said that the conservatorship was a route to helping secure the eligibility to play college football, saying that lawyers advised him at the time that they couldn't adopt anyone over the age of 18, and the only thing they could do was to have a conservatorship. He said he would have been willing to end the conservatorship if Michael wanted that. Quote, if he had said, I don't want to be part of this family anymore, we'd have been very upset, but we absolutely would have done it. His son, Sean Tui Jr., also known as SJ, told Barstool Sports that he believes the issues between Michael and their family was built over time. He alleged that Michael asked for money from them around 2021, but claimed that he will never say anything negative about his brother. SJ also said that he was not aware of the details of the movie deal, but knew that his father gave him a check a few years after the movie came out. He said that he did not know why his parents chose a conservatorship over adoption, but he assumed it was because of Michael's age. And now social media's most unexpected friendship seems to have come to a screeching halt. Bobby Althoff, the TikTok star known for quickly becoming one of the internet's favorite content creators, surprised fans when she was able to get Drake on for one of her episodes of the Really Good Podcast. Bobby is a 26 year old mumfluencer whose podcast has been going viral, largely thanks to the hilarious deadpan comedic delivery and the number of interviews that she's landed with notoriously media shy celebrities like Lil Yachty, Tiger, and Rihanna's ex. She also did an interview with Mark Cuban where she asked him for $20,000. He said he could give it to her, but that would set a bad precedent. And then she responded by saying, But please? Despite the fact that this podcast only launched in June, her interview with Drake immediately went viral and got over 10 million views. It was purposefully deeply awkward and hilariously uncomfortable. At one point, she asks him how much money he has, to which he responds by saying a significant amount. And then she tells him that she's never heard him rap. She also asks him to describe his type, to which he says that he appreciates beauty in many forms. Bobby tells Drake that he's desperate and the banter just goes on like that for a while. It is a little cringy, but it's definitely meant to be. At one point, Drake asks if she'd ever go to one of his shows, and then he proceeds to actually invite her. Of course, she shows up, and then she posts a hilarious TikTok of her in the crowd. In the video, she's standing still while her friends dance around her, fully inhabiting her deadpan character and looking extremely bored. After her interview was published, she told Cosmopolitan that Drake followed her after her interview with comedian Marco went viral, and so she DM'd him to see if he would be a guest. He agreed, and then he sent her his touring schedule. She then flew to Memphis to interview him in a vet backstage at the FedEx Forum. But despite the fact that the video earned tons of views and comments, it seems to have been removed from YouTube and scrubbed off Spotify, leaving people wondering what on earth happened. But it gets worse because the two of them have also unfollowed each other on Instagram, which is really strange considering that she was recently at his concert. Of course, this only caused the online world to speculate about what could have happened between them. Some have speculated that Bobby's TikTok at his concert was one step too far, and others commented that their interview was too awkward and that none of it was tongue in cheek. On top of that, there's also been a few theories buzzing around that this was just a marketing ploy and that the video hasn't been scrubbed, it's just been made private for now. But there was something else brought up in all of this. Some people have been comparing this situation to what happened between Drake and Ice Spice last year. There were rumors flying around that something happened between them around August. The then 23 year old caught Drake's attention with her breakout hit Munch and her freestyle on the radar radio. He then flew her out to Toronto to attend his Oberfest. When talking about that moment, she said she was surprised that he DM'd her. Spice said, linking up with him was so cool because he's very nice and respectful. She enjoyed her time with him and felt excited about performing in Toronto. So there was a big emphasis on Drake's hospitality here and the fact that he was so welcoming towards her. But clearly somewhere along the way, something happened between them that soured their relationship. Because in January, he had dissed her on his song Her Loss, which sparked a social media storm. In the lyrics, he said, she's a 10 trying to rap, it's good on mute. He then unfollowed her on Instagram and in response, Spice took to Twitter shortly after and wrote, at least I'm a 10. It was only recently that the two of them seemed to have cleared the air. In an interview with the New York Times, she said that they're cool and they spoke after that a couple 
couple of times and there's no beef. So it's possible that whatever is going on with his latest feud right now, it'll get resolved eventually. What do you guys think about this latest video? Please let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one.